Hey everybody, we are teaching Tilt Brush. And today's Tilt Brush lesson is about a new guide. Yes, in one of the updates recently, they gave us a new guide in the guides panel to play with, and it actually behaves a little bit different. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my guides panel. And beforehand, we used to have the sphere guide for per perfect spheres, the cube guide, for any kind of rectangular shape, and the pill guide, which was a cylinder with rounded ends. They have since added a new guide called ellipsoid. This guy right here, the ellipsoid guide, is brand new and does indeed behave a little bit different. So I'm going to put it up here so you can see it each time I grab it. Now with a normal guide, for example our sphere guide, we can make it bigger, smaller, we can use it in different ways. When we paint on it, we're only painting on the outside surface. And if I, even if I wanted to go directly across, you can see it actually follows the contours whoops, of the surface itself. So even though I went straight across, it's still trying to follow the sphere. So the ellipsoid actually behaves a little bit different. We've seen in the cube guide, not only can we make the whole thing bigger and smaller, but depending on how we grab it, we can also stretch it. So you see bigger and smaller is the same, but if I grab one face and then grab the opposite face, I can stretch it like an accordion, or skyscraper, or wall, or pizza box. And I'll grab it just generally and make the whole thing a little bit smaller. Now let's go for a full pizza box, make it nice and square. There we go, now it's a pizza box. But they're all regular shapes, and you must stay on the outside. You can't shortcut straight across the shape. Even in the case of a cube, I cannot actually paint from one side to another. If I go in with any paintbrush, let's grab a normal paintbrush here, you'll see that I can only paint on one face at a time. I can't go around it. I can't go through it. I'm stuck on that face until I go to another face. Another face. So I can get things like a pyramid or at least a, a, a three-sided shape by painting in corners and things. I should probably use a shaded brush instead of a non-shaded brush. But you can see how guides normally just let you do one thing at a time. We're now going to look at this new ellipsoid guide because he actually behaves a little bit differently. So as you can see, it starts off sort of a football shape, a round oval, not a perfect sphere. It behaves at first like our cube. Not only can I make the whole thing bigger and smaller, bigger, smaller, little tiny one, but it's also, if I grab one face, the pointy end, I can grab the other face and stretch it accordion style. So I can make it now, it's a lozenge. Shrink it back down. Now I'm going to grab one face, grab the other face, and stretch it this way. Now it's a disc, a flying saucer. Now I'm going to grab one face, grab the other face, and stretch this way, and pull it out so it's almost a sphere. So I'm going to grab one face, grab the other face, and stretch a little bit. A little too big, there we go. There we go, now it's very nearly a sphere, but I can grab any surface and distort it in its direction. So it's a round shape, but we can change its shape just like the cube, grabbing opposite faces and stretching in those directions to distort 
distort that shape as we need. It still stays round and curved. It is still symmetrical. So I can't, for example, make an egg that's smaller on one end than the other. These are always gonna be regular symmetrical shapes. But even like this, I could grab one edge and the other edge and turn it into a lozenge instead of a circle. Ellipsoid. The other interesting property of an ellipsoid, I can make it a little bit bigger and make it a little bit bigger. Now, just like any other guide, if I go in with my paintbrush, let's use a shaded paintbrush this time, I'm still painting on the outside. So you can see I'm still painting in a curve all the way around the outside of the sphere. Even if I try coming in from the inside, I'm still painting on the outside. Just like the other curves, I mean the other guides, if I use the eyeball, that just turns the guide on and off. Now it's not there, so I can paint however I want. Now it's back in the same place, so I'm back to painting on the shell, just like any other guide. One of the biggest differences is this. Not only do I have my ellipsoid, I'm going to switch to a hull shape. Watch this. If I start on one end, I can actually pull straight through to the other end. I'm not stuck on the surface. I can actually jump ship. Now you can see I've painted almost a cylinder shape moving from one end of the ellipsoid to the other. Or I could do it from this direction. Let's turn off my selection tool so I can paint a little on this end and then snap, whoops, it's tougher on this one because it's so close to the other edges that it wants to try to stick to the other edges. But in this direction, you can see how it's actually shorter to jump straight across than to jump to the outer edges. Here's the size of my guide. So jumping the narrow way is shorter for it than trying to trace the edge all the way around. So I can make not just a cylinder, but if I'm careful, I'm gonna start with the center and make it small, pull straight across and make it bigger. And I can use the guides to try to keep it even. Let's get you out of the way. But now I've got this interesting cone shape that normally would be very difficult to draw, but now I'm using these extra properties of the ellipsoid to give me some more unique, interesting shapes to play with. So instead of just cylinders, which we could do this with a pill, this is not something that's quite as easy to do without some of these extra tools. So the ellipsoid guide, it's got a few extra properties that a normal guide doesn't have. Plus we can reshape it similar to the way we reshape the cube guide. Don't forget about the eyeball that lets you temporarily turn off the guides without losing their place. Even if you have multiple guides going at once, let's make this one a tall skinny one. Make it overall small and stick it out the top. And then we'll duplicate it. Oops, actually I'm gonna keep it vertical, there we go. So you can see I'm actually gonna stick it. Well, let's not bother messing with this too much. But we can play with these guides, but now I can turn them all on and off at once. And when I turn them back on, they're still in the same place. So play with this new ellipsoid guide it has a few special properties, but it can really help you get up some nice placement, some nice pieces, see how it works. Let us know what you think of it. Let us know what things you can create from it. We're going to be doing this every week here on twitch.tv slash shameless mayhem. We also keep everything posted on youtube.com slash shameless mayhem.
Let us know in the comments if there are any questions you have or if there's any particular tools you'd like us to look at because we do this all the time and we'd like to do any lessons to help you learn more about how to use Tilt Brush. Thanks for joining us this week. I hope the ellipsoid tool intrigues you so you're going to try some stuff. Have fun with Tilt Brush.